People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice on the road to success. So how is it that investors like us who didn't start out with much money and who don't rely on banks and credits, how is it that we can increase our income and build our wealth in a way that doesn't require us replacing one full-time job with another while still enjoying the things in life that matter most to us? That has always been the big question, and this podcast reveals the answers. I am Carrie Light. And this is The Investor Warrior. Hey guys, and welcome to The Investor Warrior podcast show. Um, You've probably noticed that we haven't published a a couple of shows in a few weeks now, and that is because I was out in Costa Rica for a month, and I was at a place where I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of internet Uh, But I didn't realize there wasn't going to be enough internet for me to um, publish some shows. So I apologize for that because I know we were on a pretty consistent schedule there. Um, And we're going to get back to that schedule uh, now that I'm home and um, I'll probably have a a podcast show about uh, what I was doing over there. Um, Anyway, so we're going to have some cool guests coming on um, after the first of the year. And um, I'm excited for a new year. So I'm also excited to bring today's guest on. It's David Hill, uh, who is in Orlando. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring David on right now. David, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for having me. So I was just telling David, you guys, that I feel like I know David, but we've never actually met Mm -hmm. until a few minutes ago when he came on the live stream. But We've been messaging back and forth, and David, I follow you on Facebook. Um, Looks like we have some mutual friends here in Orlando, and you used to be in real estate. I saw that you used to be an appraiser. Correct. They'll say, yeah. Um, But, you know, I've been following your story. I used to be a physical therapist, um, and I used to work with spinal cord injury and brain injury um, inpatient and outpatient, and I've been following all the work that you've been doing Um, over the last few years now, and just seeing such tremendous progress. And I'm going to let you tell your story, um, which is so grateful for you coming on here because, guys, it's it's not all about real estate. (laughs) It's about (laughs) life is about overcoming challenges and adversity and pivoting when life throws us curveballs. And you've had quite a bit of curveballs thrown at you over the last Uh, few years. Just a few. (laughs) Just a few. (laughs) Um, But the way that you present yourself um, out to the world is just incredible and amazing what you've been able to do. And I love what you're um, focused on and what your new purpose is. And so I just wanted for you to come on and to share your amazing story with everyone because Um, I think it could give a lot of perspective on what challenges really can be like in life and how you can overcome them. Uh, True. Um, Well, like you said, I'm David and I grew up here in Orlando. Um, I was a real estate appraiser uh, for Wells Fargo for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I actually started getting to the um, investment side of real estate. I started uh, flipping homes with my stepsister. And we had just started and finished our third project um, when I was at a friend's wedding and we were all staying at the venue in Alabama and I jumped in the pool and jumped a little too far and broke my neck uh, right at C4, C5 Uh, and pretty much uh, don't have any voluntary movement below my chest. Uh, And that happened in September of 2014. Um, so that pretty much changed my life from that point. Um, I pretty much had to stop doing the business with my sister, um, had to move out of my house, um, back in with my parents because I needed 24 hour care and, uh, I didn't really get, I don't get much assistance from the government, um, as far as like caregivers or help. Um, so pretty much it's all out of pocket and, uh, that put a strain on it. And that's why I had to move back with the, my parents. And, uh, but luckily I found a place right here in Orlando um, called Next Step Orlando that specializes 
in spinal cord recovery. And I've been going now ever since pretty much my accident. And I've seen uh, definitely some recovery, definitely improvement. Um, but with spinal cord injury, it's improvement is, is slow. It's definitely a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, but, you know, little by little, hopefully I'll be getting there. And uh, it's just nice to, you know, talk to new people and tell my story and put it out there that, you know, uh, it's not, the spinal cord people don't get a lot of, um, I guess, press or traction mm -hmm. because uh, there's not a lot of us. Um, but uh, it's just nice to be uh, still a part of something in a community and uh, talk to new people. Um, so that's, you know, kind of my story where I'm at right now. How, how old were you when this happened? Uh, I was 34 um, wow. when it happened. So it's been a little while now. I'm yeah. Kind of still getting used to it, but it's, it's kind of set in now that it, there's not, luckily there's not a lot of big or money going into like developing new technology or help for these kind of accidents. But um, that's why I keep working out, uh, you know, as much as I can to yeah. try to get some improvement right? and make my life a little bit easier. Yeah. I know. So it's kind of, I worked in a inpatient and an outpatient gym with spinal cap, uh, cord rehab. And I think what the most difficult thing is for people going through this is it's overnight. It's instant. It's literally one second. Your life mm -hmm. completely changes. And I mean like completely. And in a lot of cases with spinal cord injury, your brain and your mental functioning are fully intact, but your body's not. And that Correct. can be mentally challenging. And I'm sure that you've had your ups and downs mentally um, with all of this. What was it like in the beginning? How did you get through those first couple of weeks knowing that your life had changed? Well, actually, the first three weeks, I don't have any memory of because um, I was in intensive care for a little over a month. So on the fourth week when I woke up, um, I couldn't move. I couldn't talk because I they had put a ventilator in me. Um, so I had no way of communicating. So I basically woke up unable to communicate, move, uh, and in pretty much intense pain. And it was terrifying. I mean, I was, it's the most scared of it, terrified I've ever been in my life. Um, so it, it was definitely hard. And then I, a week later, I went to a um, real bail, um, sorry, a uh, specialty like rehabilitation uh, hospital up in Atlanta called uh, Shepherd Center. And I was there for about two months. Um, and I was slowly able to like, work my way where I can start talking again. And even that little bit of just being able to communicate was like the biggest thing, because when you have everything stripped from you, like in an instant, it is by far the most terrifying thing. You could, something could happen to you. And then not be able to do anything for yourself. I mean, as far as eating, drinking, going to the bathroom, bathing, I mean, it's just, you give up so much a part of you. Uh, so from there, it's it's definitely been those first, <laughs> I'd say the first eight months were probably the hardest, nine months. Mm -hmm. um, you really have to do a lot of soul searching uh, because it's, it's something to give up on very easily uh, where you're just like, this might, this is just too much. Um, yeah. But it takes a lot of like good family and friends to help you through it. And then from then, uh, finding next step uh, definitely helped. Talking to more people in similar situations, uh, I think helped more than anything else. And then from there, then you can realize like, okay, maybe I can get through this. Maybe I can, you know, 
live and, you know, have some kind of purpose back to my life. Mm -hmm. What is your purpose now? I know your purpose has probably changed. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely, definitely at first you're like, oh, I want to be back to normal. I want to be able to run. I want to be able to, you know, feed myself, do all this stuff. But um, it kind of changes after a little while because you realize like, all right, I might not be able to get all this back, but I at least want to get something. And so my main goal right now is at least um, get some kind of arm movement back just so I can be able to like you know, eat, uh, drink, um, just kind of be able to move my arms so I don't have to rely on other people to like feed me and uh, give me things so I can be a little bit more independent. Uh, that's my main goal right now. Mm -hmm. and what about your bigger purpose in life? I mean, you have this incredible story making these small improvements, but when you look at where you came from, they're pretty huge improvements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny when you look at things like, uh, you know, just be able to, you know, I couldn't move my arm at all. And now I can kind of lift my arm and my hand. And I'm like, wow, that's a, that almost took five years to do that. <laughs> um, when you think back before, it's just like, it, you don't think about those kind of things. Sure. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a kind of big improvement. And, uh, but I think kind of like my side goal is um, kind of helping other people deal with this. Yeah. Um, because I've got a lot of messages because, you know, we, the spinal cord group is so small that, um, you kind of come as one, especially in a lot of the groups on Facebook or Instagram, um, you kind of start meeting people around the country and around the world actually. Uh, and so I've gotten messages from people pretty much all over the world who all of a sudden is in this circumstance they're paralyzed um, or they have a family member and they're just shocked because it's not a normal injury uh, as far as someone breaking their leg or someone having some kind of surgery. Um, it's life changing, just not to the person, but everyone around you, it changes their life um, because either they have to go into a caregiving role or they have to, you know, somehow support that person. Mm -hmm. And uh, the messages I get are, you know, what do I do? Are they going to be able to move again? Are they going to, you know, I mainly tell them, like, look, you got to be realistic. Like, yes, they could move again, but it's a slow process. You have to work at it. Um, you got to have a good base and family group, uh, friends. Anyone around you, you just need people there. Uh, because if not, it gets very lonely and yeah. very depressing. Um, so I try to tell them like, look, the people around you that are trying to help, don't let them do everything. Because if they try to do that, they'll get burned out. Because it takes a lot to, you know, feed someone, you know, bathe yeah. them, get them up, get do this, do that. It's it can overwhelm people and you don't want to do that to you, you know, your loved ones because it might just push you guys away farther and then you'll be in an even worse place. Um, so that's kind of one of the main things I try to tell them. Um, but also that, you know, you can get through this. It's not life changing. I mean, it's life changing, but you'll not be able to, do, yeah, <laughs> you'll be able to like, you know, adjust to it and, move on and yeah, hopefully start a new life and maybe a new purpose with yeah. that life. Yeah. I like that. It's, it's life changing, not life ending. And yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. You can have a start a new life, have mm -hmm. a new purpose. Yeah. Um, you definitely don't want it life ending because yeah, you, everyone has a lot to live for. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, and that can be applied in so many ways in life. I mean, so many people just starting over mentally, physically, emotionally, 
Exactly. Uh, starting over, starting a new life and, and, and getting, having a new purpose to work towards, um, will keep people going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll keep them from stop giving to, to stop giving up. Correct. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's so easy to give up sometimes. I mean, just, just I throw in the towel and be like, ah, I don't, but yeah. sometimes you just need to be like, look at something and be like, maybe I need to be doing something else or maybe I need to be doing something that makes me happy or, or what does make me happy or, you know, what, how can I make other people happy that will in turn make me happy? And I think definitely for me, the talking to people online and trying to help them and what they're going through and, um, uh, it's just nice to communicate and see that change, like uh, that they are doing better now. And um, cause I've had one guy where his, um, his son was 18, got in wreck, uh, basically couldn't, same as me, couldn't move from the chest down. And, you know, he was really con committed, you know, thinking about committing suicide. And I was telling him like, look, uh, there's a lot to live for. Um, you don't have to, just accept this. If you work at it, you can, you know, get some of this back and be happy again. And as I talked to his dad and I finally talked to him, he uh, he's doing a lot better now. He's in a better place. Um, he knows that now if he starts working at things, um, it just emotionally he feels better. And uh, that can just go a long way because, you know, a lot of this is just, uh, mental, yeah, mental emotion, mental uh, fortitude to uh, get through this, yeah, and having those loved ones around definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. I, I, one of my favorite quotes from Tony Robbins is, um, progress equals happiness. Mm -hmm. And anytime you feel anxious, if you just start working towards something and it doesn't even have to be big progress, like you said, over a five year period of time, you can now lift your arm. But that's progress. Mm -hmm. And you can exactly. see it, you can feel it. And it doesn't matter at what rate your progress is compared to someone else's. Um, but progress does equal happiness, no matter how much progress you are making. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, there's been uh, that's the strange thing about a spinal cord. Um, it's one of the only body parts that doesn't heal itself. Mm. And um, there's people that go to my gym who have the same exact injury level, but can walk and live on their own. Yeah. But then I, you know, can't. And then there's people, you know, lower than me injury level who have almost less movement yeah. or feeling. So it, it's a it's a devastating thing that can happen to people with the spinal cord injuries. But, uh, you know, like we're saying, you know, there's, it's not the end of the road. It could right. just be the start of a new road. So, yeah. so you work out three times a day. At, I'm sorry, three times a week at the um, gym. I mean, what other things occupy your time now? Um, well, I, uh, yeah, like you said, I go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to the gym for two hours. Um, and then also I have a, uh, I went three years ago to Bangkok to get an epidural stimulator put into my spine. Um, and I got that to help facilitate and, uh, hopefully speed up the recovery just a little bit more. Um, it basically is like a TENS unit, uh, electrical stimulation that, uh, I can turn on and it basically sends electricity uh, to certain parts of my muscles and body. And I, I turn, I use that a lot. Well, at the gym doing exercises, but also uh, I have different settings I can put on the days I don't go to the gym just to keep constant um, electrical signals going throughout my body that try to help facilitate that recovery and that connection between my spine and muscles. Um, but also I have an exercise equipment here at the house uh, I use. And uh, basically just also talking to people online, uh, mm -hmm. filling out, you know, uh, different uh, fit questions and mm -hmm. replying to people, uh, 
but I'm also a big Gator fan, and I I like watching the Gators. <laughs> Uh, I'm a knight, so I don't know if we can be talking right now. <laughs> well, I most of my family went to UCF, so I actually do have season tickets to UCF football games. Oh, okay, so all right. <laughs> I'm a ha I'm a part knight, but all right, accepted. Okay. Yeah, except <laughs> I will have to root for the Gators when they play UCF. Yeah, I'm well un understandable. <laughs> Well, cool. Um, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and um, pull the banner up uh, here with David's um, Facebook uh, profile link. Um, and I'll also add this to the show notes if you are listening to this on the podcast and you're not on our live stream right now. Um, but it's facebook.com forward slash D as in dog hill strong. And um, there is a, a PayPal link there. Um, like David said, everything is pretty much out of pocket. I know with spinal cord injury, um, just being in the clinical setting, uh, insurance only covers you usually the first year, maybe. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. after that, it's like you're on your own because you're not making enough progress for them to justify, you know, in their eyes, what they're going to exactly. cover. Is that true? <laughs> oh, very true. Has, has anything changed? I haven't been. No, I pretty much got you know, pulled from um, the therapy center the, uh, at the Shepherd Center, like pretty much after two months because I wasn't showing enough progress. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whether you have experience with spinal cord injury or not, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a very slow progress, but <clears throat> process, I'm sorry, but the progress that patients make with it are life-changing, even the small progress. And, and it can take years, decades. When I worked in the outpatient facility, we worked with people who had 10, 15, 20 years ago had had their injury and they were still doing uh, therapy for it. And they were still seeing improvements with it. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm hopeful too, that there's going to be more and more research done on spinal cord injury. Um, because really it's a fascinating thing to look at um, mm -hmm. the spinal cord uh, and what happens um, when it's injured. And there's enough people out there that have been affected by spinal cord. Uh, I think that there needs to be more research put into it. Um, <laughs> stem cell and all different kinds of things that could go a long way in healing the whole body, not just the spinal cord, but um, you know, sp spinal cord is the center of everything. It controls everything in our, mm -hmm. in our bodies. And when that is injured, it, it can be devastating. So I really am hopeful that they're going to be doing more research on it. But um, in the meantime, you guys, like we said, David doesn't get um, a lot of funding anymore from insurance. He relies all on donations and, you go to the gym three times a week. I'm sure that costs you out of pocket. Yeah, that's straight out of pocket. It's not covered by insurance. Yeah. And it's $100 an hour. I go yeah. three times a week for two hour sessions. And yeah, yeah it's uh, the only way I go is all through donations and fundraisers I hold every year. Because yeah. um, if I didn't have, you know, supporting people to supporting me and uh, the community, I, I couldn't go and I wouldn't be able to see any progress or yeah. have really any hope yeah. of getting progress uh, without yeah. them. Yeah. So you guys, please go on to facebook.com sports slash D Hill strong, check out his story. Um, he's got some really cool videos of him walking with this new wheelchair that you got and you're doing the electrical stim and some of the, um, in some of the videos. And I, I love the videos where you're actually using your core <laughs> to pull back on certain, like, it's amazing what you're doing for the injury that you've had. It really is uh, just coming from a clinical perspective. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and, and it is because you are working so hard. I mean, you could have sat back and done nothing and, you know, sat in your chair and lived out the rest of your days and not gotten anything back, but you're starting to get things set back. And that is really exciting for both the spinal cord injury community and just for people in general to see what kind of progress you can make from such a, a life changing event and, um, and how you can continue to prosper in life and live a fulfilled life and have a different purpose. And 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's very inspiring what you're doing. No, thanks. I really appreciate it. So you guys, please, uh, there's a, a PayPal link there. Um, that's where you can donate to, um, to David's care and uh, his foundation. And uh, thank you so much, David, for, for coming on. I'm grateful for this opportunity to finally get to meet you. And I'm going to continue oh, to follow fine. you. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to be rooting for you. I can't wait to see what kind of progress you make in the next few years. So <laughs> yeah, no, it, run into each other. Right? Slowly, but yeah. uh, I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see each other at a UCF game. I probably won't be at any Gators games, but. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll, 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 we'll run into each other at a UCF game one of these days. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it for today. Take care. We'll see you on the next episode. And remember, you are only one deal away.